y'all. Welcome to Tea Thoughts, where we nourish our souls through in-depth Bible studies, encouragement through the Word, and learning spiritual disciplines. If you would like to be a part of this community, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can get all the content that I upload every week. Now, today we are beginning our June Bible study. I am so excited. This month, we are doing a topical study on identity. And this lesson is called, Who Am I? The Beginning. I have been asked to do this study on this subject. And I believe that is going to bless so many people because that is one thing that we um, struggle with is our identity. We struggle with the question of who am I, right? And so we search for answers and trying to figure out who am I? What am I supposed to be doing in this life, right? So we're going to talk about identity in the framework of scripture. So grab your Bible get your favorite pen and highlighters and your favorite, favorite journal. And of course, get your Bible. Did I say get your Bible? Get your Bible and let's study on identity. Your focus for this lesson is Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And it reads, let's see, what does it read? It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will, they will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. That is the word of God. Now, we're going to dissect or exegese that text. But before I go there, I'm going to read you something in the context of that's part of scripture in Genesis 1 and 27, where it says he created him in the image of God. Okay. Now I got this from ChristianityToday.com and I'm going to link it below. It's a little lengthy, but bear with me because I think it's going to help us um, understand that word or, or that phrase image of God. Okay. So it says, the image of God is defined as the meta metaphysical expression associated uniquely to humans, which signifies the, the symbolic connection between God and humanity. The phrase has its origins in Genesis 1 and 27, wherein God created man in his own image. This biblical passage does not imply that God is in human form. I want you to get that but that humans are in the image of God in their moral, spiritual, and intellectual essence, okay? In other words, for humans to have the conscious recognition of their being in the image of God means that they are the creature through whom God's plan and purposes can be made known and actualized, okay? Get that. Humans in this way can be seen as co-creators with God. The moral implication of the doctrine of imago dei are, are apparent in the fact that if humans are to love God, then humans must love other humans as each is an expression of God. Come on. Thus humans reflect God's divine nature and their ability to achieve the unique characteristics with which they have been endowed. These unique qualities make humans different from all other creatures. Okay, Rational understanding we have, creative liberty is what we have, the capacity of self-actualization, and the potential for self-transcendence. 
sentence, okay? Y'all, when I read that, that just blew my mind. It's a lot, but it's, it, it unwraps what identity is, what our image of God is. Our image of God, and I don't want to go ahead of myself, but this right here got me when it says, Image of God is defined as the metaphysical expression associatedly uniquely to humans. So when God said, let us make man in our image, he made us unique, come on, to be able to have the uh, 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 characteristics, the moral, spiritual, and intellectual essence of God. <laughs> Y'all. That is, that is wrapped up into our identity. Our identity is not so much our physical makeup, right? But it is who we are at the core of who we are in our essence of who, are, who we are. It's our characteristics. It's our, our uh, moral uh, uh, beings. It's our spiritual beings, right? So let's dive into this text. So I'm going to give you another definition. The image means a representation of the external form of a person or thing in art, right? The Hebrew word for image means selim. It's S-E-L-E-M. I'll put it on the screen. Is a represent representative in physical form, not a representation of the physical appearance. Okay, so this is what I want you to understand. Number one, you are God's masterpiece. You are created in his image, right? His heart and his spirit makes up your identity. Come on. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What are those good works? God hand created you. He, he took you while you were in your mother's womb and he formed you and he put him in you. Your characteristics, your moral behavior, your intellect. It's because of God. We are to display the characteristics of God, right? So look, look at Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, God is crafting your life into a piece of art. He is working on you and doing something with you. Look, this is the thing when we get discouraged. This, I don't want you to be discouraged because I don't, in this quest of finding you. Don't be discouraged in the quest of finding you. And meaning, finding you means that you find God. OK, and also finding out what God's purpose is for your life. And that is where we struggle because it is hard for us to figure out what does God really want us to do? Am I doing a tease idea or is this a God idea? Come on. I asked God that about something that I am dreaming of. I've been dreaming this up in my head for, for a few months now. And I'm like, God, I asked him this morning. I said, God, is this a tease idea or is this a God idea? If it's a God idea, I want to do it. If it's a tease idea, I still want to do it but I need your help doing it. But if it's, if it's not your will for me to do it, then I don't want to do it. You know, we go through all of that. But this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to, I don't want you to be discouraged in your quest of finding out your purpose and finding out your identity because the enjoyment of this adventure is seeking God. And when you seek God and you know God, you'll know you. Come on. When you seek him, you will find you. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah, he says, seek me. When you seek me, you'll find me. When you find him, you find you. Because the essence of who God is, is who we are. Come on. Oh, Lord, which brings me to point number two. You have to know who God is in order to know your true identity. Y'all, when you know who God is, as you being a Christian and a believer, you know who you are. Your identity is God's identity. 
Come on. So when you know who God is, you will know who you are. Because God had good intentions for you when he made you. When he made you and he made me, God's original intent for you was to live a good life. He made us and told, he told Adam and Eve, he said, I created you in my image and you were very good. I gave you everything that you need to live. You, they had close relationship. They were in close proximity to the father. But here's the thing. Sin came. Sin came and tainted God's first plan for us. But here's the thing, when you get saved, right, because of sin, because of our sinful nature, when you get saved, you have to fight your way back to God's original intent for who you were made to be, your original identity. Come on. But you got to fight for that thing. You got to dive into this thing. It's not going to be easy. It's not. But you got to spend time in God's word. You got to spend time in prayer. And as you know who God is through prayer and through his word, you know who you are. Come on. When you get saved, like I said, you've got to fight your way back to God's original intent for you. Your true identity is wrapped up in God. Look at Colossians 3 and 10. And it says, And have put on the new self, so you are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. When you put on God and you put on your new self, you are being renewed daily. That old way of thinking, gone. But it's not going to be overnight. You, but here's the thing, you are no longer your old sinful self. Your identity has been made new according to the image of God because of Jesus who brought us near to God. Oh, Jesus, the new self replaces the old, but is continuously being renewed to the reflection of the image of God. Our new self, we are constantly being molded, which is sanctification. We are being sanctified daily. We are no longer our old selves. But when you've been doing the same thing wrong for 20 years, it's, you think all of a sudden it's going to turn right when you become a Christian. The thing is, our, our salvation is automatic, but sanctification is a process. Come on. You have got, when you got to get rid of that old way of thinking and walk into the new identity, the original identity, come on, your true self, when you start to know who God is. Come on. Put down in the comment box, I'm knowing who God is. I'm on the adventure to know who God is. And when you know God, you'll know you. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you, Paul said, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So there we go again. There is going to be a mind renewal. My apostle, my coach, my, my mentor, she says, there got to be a mind renovation. You got to go through mind renovation when you walk into this thing to know who you are, to get off the fake ID. That's Apostle C. You got to get rid of the fake ID and become your true self. She wrote about true identity. This is my apostle, Apostle Catherine Newsom. She wrote this book called True Identity. There is a class that we take, that I have taken, and it's called the True Identity Program. And that program helped me walk through the process of what some of the things that I'm telling you now. To know who you are in God, your true self, your true identity. So it is a process, guys. It is a process. And I don't want you to be frustrated in the process, but enjoy the process. Enjoy the adventure of knowing who God is so that you'll know who you are. Y'all, 
Here we go. Number three, we are all different physically. Our personalities are different, but the, at the core of us, at the core of our being, our identity, we are like God. Let me say it again. We are all different physically. We are different in personalities. Our, but at the core of identity, we are like God. We have unique qualities that make us who we are. That goes back. He said, I, we made, he made us unique, right? But at the same time, we are like God. So look at, let's look at 1 Samuel 16 through 6, 1 Samuel 16, 6 through 7. I want to show you something. So this is where Samuel goes to anoint David, right? And they said, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointing stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Samuel was looking at the physical appearance of the sons, but God was not looking at the physical appearance. He was looking for a heart that was like his. Come on. God looks at the heart. The visible, our physical appearance and all of that is fickle. Yeah. Just because you cute don't mean that you got a good heart. Just because you cute doesn't mean your identity relates to God. When you don't act like God, come on. Just because you might not have, you might be tall, you might be short, I might be thin, you might be fat. But come on, at the core of it is your heart like God. Is your characteristics like God. Come on. That's what God is looking for. God wants a heart that is pliable. He wants a heart that is moldable and that he can, that is renewable to be like his. Y'all, we are our father's children. And just like me, I, I look like my daddy. I look like my mama too, but I look like my daddy. I look like my mama and my daddy. Okay. And there are characteristics of my mom and characteristics of my dad that makes me who I am. But as a believer in Jesus Christ and God the Father, I have the characteristics of the Father in heaven and that builds my identity. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. You are a, a son and a daughter of the Most High God. So act like him. We got to act like him. Come on. We can't walk around here all slumped down and thrown away. My, my earthly parents don't even want me to do that. More, no more than my heavenly father would want me walking around here all sad and, and thrown away. No. Come on. When he's, he's giving me everything that I need for life and godliness, come on. And he's giving you everything that you need. He said, I created you. You are my workmanship. Created for good use. For plans that I purpose ahead of time. Y'all, our identity is the substance of who God is. Look at this. God is lovable. You're lovable. God is kind. You're kind. God is fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is creative. You are creative. God is passionate. You are passionate. God is holy. You are holy. God's a creator of masterpieces. God has created you a masterpiece. You are the apple of God's eye. And that's just a small part of who you are. Come on. And here's the thing. I don't want you to be confused when it comes to identity. And it can be confusing because sometimes we confuse our identity with purpose. Come on. And we're fighting. And not only that, we're fighting our old self to become our new self. Every day we got to get up and, and, and fight that old spirit. 
until God just takes it till you just be like, uh-uh, this, this don't bother me no more. That's not who I am. And when you come into the realization of who you are, that old stuff don't, don't, can't sit with you, right? So, but I don't want you to get confused with purpose in your identity. And we're going to study purpose in lesson four, but I want us to get the foundation of identity so that we can handle purpose well. Because if you don't know who you are in God, you'll mess up purpose. Come on. And at the end of the day, I, God gives us assignments. He gives us different assignments in different seasons. But I am a child of God. You are a child of God. That's who you are. You are the essence of God the creator. That's who you are. Your personalities are different. We all have different personalities. You know, when I was in the True Identity class, we had to take personality tests. I've taken some for work. I know my different personality. I know my makeup. But that, and look, here's the thing. Just because my personality may be something, but if that person, if a, per, if a personality trait causes me to sin, then we got to put the blood on that thing. Come on. And say, uh-uh, I got to walk in the newness of God. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Our identity, your true identity. Look what the Bible says. God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. You're the image of God. That's your identity. And when you dive into this book and you know who God is, you'll know who you are. All right, guys, I hope that lesson one, who am I, the beginning, and the Genesis means the beginning. And so go back and read Genesis 1, 26 through 28 and dive into it and tell me in the comments, what did God say to you on this text? What is God saying to you? And, and, and so we can expound on it, okay? But go into it and ask the Father, who are you? Who is God? So that you'll know who you are. All right, guys. I hope that this lesson has encouraged your heart. If it has, hit that like button. When you like these videos, it pushes it out. And we want to take the gospel to the nations. So hit that, hit the like button, push it on out, share it with a friend so that others will know who they are in Christ. All right. If you have not, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I would love to have you a part of the T-Stars family. So we are doing some exciting things, got some new things coming up, and I want you to join us. Okay. So again, guys, don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself grace as you dive through this word. This book is going to show you who you are. Okay. All right, guys, be kind to yourself. Be kind to someone else and have a graceful week. I see you in lesson two. Bye.